who's telling the truth. Guys, today is August 1st, 2016. This is show 144. Look at the beautiful job Kurt did on this sign. And the name of the show is The Lion King. <laughs> Guys, I tell you, I wanted to do the show on wind turbines. John, our old director, is up in Ontario, New York, and he's He's got some beautiful videos of some wind turbines. Um, and I tell you, they just blew me away. And we're going to show them to you. And also, guys, the Gigafactory outside of Reno, Nevada, the Gigafactory that we've been touting for almost two years is open. And they're actually producing batteries. So we wanted to show that on tonight's show. But I tell you, I was going to, the way things are going, I was going to name this show Flabbergasted. If Flabbergasted <laughs> didn't have as many letters <laughs> as it does, we probably would have called this show Flabbergasted. Because, guys, it, Trump is driving me crazy. I mean, he's making me Meshuggana, and I ain't Jewish, so that's kind of hard to do. But that's, in the beginning of tonight's show, guys, that's what we're going to focus on, because <laughs> believe it or not, Trump has been named the liar of the year. I know. You know, something, we had sportsmen of the year like Muhammad Ali, you know. We could have rock star of the year. <laughs> All these different, but you know, what's Trump? He's the liar of the year. And we're going to show you some nice clips from uh, that from Politico. And I tell you, this guy, he just, he never fails to shock me. I love to watch him because I never know what's going to happen. And, uh, you know, Uncle Joey's been giving me the business because Trump was ahead in the polls. And I said, Joey, don't count your chickens. And sure enough, right after the, uh, the both conventions were over, Hillary's up by seven points. Bernie's behind her 100%. And guys, we're going to, the first part of the show, we're just going to have fun making fun of Trump. And we have to, because he deserves it. I mean, he's become a national comedian, and he's an embarrassment to the United States. And you're going to get the simple folk like Joe who are going to vote for him. He doesn't care what he'll, what, what Trump does. It doesn't matter. You know, and one, and one day I was talking to Joey. You know, we always blog back and forth on Facebook. Judy, can you put our Facebook uh, address up there? But we're blogging back and forth. And I said to Joey, I said, Joey, what would you do if your kid lied to you? And then what would you do if he came home and he repeated the lie and he made you look stupid? He goes, Rich, he goes, I, I take him out to the woodshed and you can imagine what Uncle Joey would do to his kid. So I said to him, I said, Joe, you would correct your kid, but with Donald Trump, you don't care. Well, you know, he's a politician and he can say, no, 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 no more. No more you, just because you're a politician doesn't get you, doesn't make, give you the right to be crazy or to try to trick these poor, these simple folk. I mean, you guys, go on Facebook. You want to have some fun. Go on Joey's site, Things to Ponder. I'm you're going to see how whacked out everybody is. And especially when it comes to global warming. And we're going to show you how, clump, how Trump feels about global warming. And when you see that, you're going to you go, you got to be kidding me. And guys, I don't make the clips up. I just put them on the show. <laughs> but anyway, we're going to have a lot of fun tonight. And, uh, you know, like I said, we're going to feature the turbines. And when you guys see the Gigafactory and the fact that the batteries are already being made, we're going to go back to show 64, which was almost two years ago, back in... Um, 
September 8th of 2014, that's the first show that we announced that the Gigafactory was gonna be uh, created. So guys, it's all, it's all coming to fruition. It's all starting to happen. And even though the Gigafactory is only 16% completed, it's already functioning. And I believe there's a thousand people already employed there. The future's here, guys. And you know what? We're gonna prove it to you. But first, we're gonna have some fun because we deserve it. And we deserve to give the Donald the old bada bing. So Judy, let's start the night off with the liar of the year from Politico, our buddy, Donald Trump. Thousands and thousands of people were cheering. It is wholly protected from any kind of liability. Go in the prison straight, and when they come out, they're gay. That more of the temperature readings have been fabricated. PolitiFact's Live of the Year goes to the most significant falsehood that we can find. But in 2015, we couldn't settle on just one. That's because of Donald Trump. Trump, the billionaire businessman who entered the race for president in June, has made many big and bold statements. Unfortunately, most of them are inaccurate. They're bringing drugs. They're bringing crime. They're rapists. Excuse me. All it was is a retweet. It wasn't from me. When the World Trade Center came tumbling down, and I watched in Jersey City, New Jersey, where thousands and thousands of people were cheering as that building was... Three in four claims we fact-checked of Trump have been rated mostly false, false, or pants on fire on our truth meter He claimed, for instance, that thousands of people celebrated the 9-11 attacks in New Jersey. Pants on fire. He said that Mexico was sending people across the border, not just any people, but rapists and drug dealers. Pants on fire. He claimed through a tweet that African Americans were predominantly murdering whites in this country. Pants on fire. Trump made many different misstatements, mischaracterizations, flat out falsehoods, and doubled down on them. And for that reason, we couldn't just pick one winner. So the 2015 PolitiFact Live of the Year goes to the collective misstatements of Donald Trump. Give me the truth. So can you imagine, what's your claim to fame? <laughs> I'm liar of the year. Oh, yeah? Right, Uncle Joey? <laughs> but wait a minute, wait a minute. We're gonna have, we're, we're gonna have more fun because Believe it or not, <laughs> I know, believe it or not, Trump endorses Hillary. I know, <laughs> but we're gonna prove it to you. So Judy, clip number two, please. Well, you'd be shocked if I said that in many cases, I probably identify more as a Democrat. And I've been around for a long time. And it just seems that the economy does better under the Democrats than the Republicans. Now, it shouldn't be that way. But if you go back, I mean, it just seems that the economy does better under the Democrats. Well, I think Hillary would have, Hillary's always surrounded herself with very good people. I think Hillary would do a good job. Certainly, we had some very good economies under Democrats, as well as Republicans. But we've had some pretty bad disaster under the Republicans. I don't know, what's he gonna do now, guys? And you saw the footage. I mean, they verified everything. So it's not like we're making this up. You know, and what's the one thing that we always say on this show? You know, be specific and cite your sources. And, uh, you know, hopefully, <laughs> this next clip, our source is Bloomfield. And I wanna tell you, Bloomfield is a successful billionaire. And if there's one thing you don't want to mess with, it's success. And Trump couldn't hold a candle to Bloomfield. And you know what? We're going to prove it. So, Judy, clip number three, please. The thing that was said about me. A dangerous demagogue. I mean... I built a business, and I didn't start it with a million dollar check from my father. Should I go through some of the names? Sure. No. I, you know what? I wanted to. Most of us who have our names on the door know that we are only as good as our word. 
but not Donald Trump. I wanted to hit a couple of those speakers so hard. Through his career, Donald Trump has left behind a well-documented record of bankruptcies. <laughs> Trump says he wants to run the nation like he's running his business? God help us. They're really saying bad things about me. I'm going to hit them so hard. I was going to hit one guy in particular, a very little guy. I'm a New Yorker, and I know a con when I see one. I was going to hit this guy so hard, his head would spin. He wouldn't know what the hell happened. The richest thing about Donald Trump is his hypocrisy. He came out of nowhere. This is not reality television. This is reality. I was going to hit a number of those speakers so hard, their heads would spin, they'd never recover. And that's what I did with a lot of, that's why I still don't have certain people endorsing me. They still haven't recovered. Okay? Trump is a risky, reckless, and radical choice, and we can't afford to make that choice. Guys, I, he looked them right in the eye. That's an expression. And he said... I know a good con when I see one. And yeah, it's amazing. I mean, people see it, but they ignore it. And guys, the one thing that we can't ignore, it's global warming. I mean, the proof is at our doorstep. Look what just happened in, um, was it South Carolina? No, 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 Maryland. Did you see those, that those streets were just washed out? They had to form human chains to save some people in some cars. And, you know, the place never flooded. You know, in, in the history of the, of the town, they've never had floods like that. But guys, what happens is, as the world gets warmer, warmer air holds more water. That's why when it rains, it rains so damn hard. And these poor people didn't have a chance. I mean, a lot of them were partying, and all of a sudden they looked out the front window, and there's four feet of water. <laughs> but guys, it's not a joke. But you know what? Donald Trump thinks it's a joke. He thinks that global warming is a hoax. He's one of the simple folk that doesn't understand science. He doesn't understand science but yet he wants to be president of the United States. How is this possible? And how anybody in their right mind can vote for this guy? Or well, wait a minute, you have to be in your right mind to vote for him, because nobody in their left mind is going to vote for him. But anyway, guys, when you see this next clip, and when you see how he is on global warming, you're going to say, Donald, I've had it. So, Judy... Let's do uh, clip number four, please. We're going to cancel the Paris Climate Agreement and stop. Unbelievable. And stop all payments of the United States tax dollars to UN global warming programs. President Obama entered the United States into the Paris Climate Accords unilaterally and without the permission of Congress. This agreement gives foreign bureaucrats control over how much our energy and how much we use right here in America. So foreign bureaucrats are going to be controlling what we're using and what we're doing on our land in our country. No way. No way. American energy dominance will be declared a strategic, economic, and foreign policy goal of the United States. It's about time. America has 1.5 times as much oil as the combined proven resource, listen to this, as the combined proven resources of all OPEC countries. Think of that. We have more natural gas than Russia, Iran, Qatar, Saudi Arabia combined. We have three times more coal than Russia. Our total untapped oil and gas reserves on federal lands equal an estimated $50 trillion. Think of that. We're loaded. We didn't even know it. We're loaded. 
We had no idea how rich we were. So he's going to get the simple folk to think that they're loaded, that they don't know how rich they are. Guys, let me tell you one thing. No corporation is going to share their wealth with the American public. It's the way it is. They're corporations. They're in it for the money. They're in it for the profit. They're in it for the shareholders. Now, Hillary wants to start sharing profits. Would Trump? What, are you kidding me? Would the Koch brothers? Absolutely not. Why? Every man for themselves. So what does Trump do? <laughs> Trump doesn't want to spend any money, but the Koch brothers are planning on spending close to a billion dollars. So who does Trump pick as his running mate? Somebody who the Koch brothers have fancied for a very long time and somebody who they financially supported for a very, very long time. But don't take my word for it, because the next video will prove it to you. So Judy, can you uh, show us video number uh, five, please? I guess I should read this. It could be that pinch is trying to be. So guys, all the pieces starting to fit. So Trump picks Pence so that he can pick the pockets of the Koch brothers. And the Koch brothers had one of their semi-annual big donors meetings in uh, Colorado. And guess where Trump happened to be? In Colorado. But you know what the Koch brothers told Trump? They told them, don't come knocking on our door. And of course, Trump couldn't tell the world that the Koch brothers didn't want to talk to him. So what did he do? He did what he always does. He tweeted. So Judy, can we see the tweet from uh, Trump? Number six, please. Hello, friends. This is Sam Cheney reporting for WeaponizedNews.com. Today's July 30th, 2016. And here's a tweet from Donald Trump today. I turned down a meeting with Charles and David Koch. Much better for them to meet with the puppets of politics. They will do much better. So there you have it. Self-funded campaign. Donald Trump will not meet with Charles and David Koch. The Koch brothers. The evil, evil men. Supposedly framed by the left wing. Trump is not owned. He's independent. Do your own research. Vote for Donald Trump 2016. Subscribe to this channel. Speak out and take action. Donald, you've been a bad boy. No coke for you. <laughs> coke is the real thing and you ain't getting any of it. Things go better with coke. All right, guys, that's going to be kind of the end of our Coke bashing. But uh, we're gonna, now we're going to go to our new favorite part of the show called our Facebook Favorites. And guys, these are all posts that I just pick, you know, during the week. If it's cute enough, I clip it, and then I'm going to show it, 
And I, what I try to do is I try to put the people that posted it, I try to give them a shout out, you know, in, uh, you know, in thanks of, you know, what they're doing. And I tell you guys, some of the, some of the posts, uh, you know, some of the thumbnails are just dynamite. And we're going we're gonna to enjoy this. All right, and this first one that we're going to do now, this is a little long, but this is a lot of fun. So, Judy, if you can drift in and out, because I can read this off my computer. But this is from Barry, and he said he got it from somebody else. But he writes, Trump is a man with a vision for America. Not a specific vision, a great vision, the best vision. Trump has a plan to make this country great again. What plan? A great plan. A plan that will work because it's the best plan. Why? Because Trump knows good people. Which people? The best people. People that are not stupid like other people. People who know how to get things, how to get deals done. What deals? Great deals, the biggest deals, because I know words. What words? The best words. And guys, it just goes on and on. And But what if, if that isn't Trump? If he didn't hit the nail on the head with that, everything that Trump does, Judy, come back to me for one second. Everything that Trump does is terrific. Believe me, it's huge. <laughs> All right, Judy, let's go on to the next one now. Uh-oh. Judy, by the way, I love the way you put the bug up there on the side. Nice job. All right, this man says he will uphold Article 12 of the United States Constitution. This woman has actually read the Constitution. There is no Article 12. <laughs> Next. <laughs> Guys, this is, uh, this is Vote for Energy. I don't know if you've seen these commercials on TV, but the commercials are so sweet and innocent. They usually have nice middle-class American people with little children, how they're going to vote for energy. And Judy, come back to me for a second. And guys, guess who sponsors those commercials? The American Enterprise Institute, one of the Koch brothers, <laughs> think tanks. So they, you know, and th these commercials have been playing all year. Why? So that come election time, how are you gonna think? You see how the brainwashing works? It's so subtle, it's so quaint. It's so sweet, and it goes on and on. And you know what? Watch, watch Fox News. It's on MSNBC. It's on CNN. It's on all the channels. And you're going to say, oh, yeah, I want to vote for energy. Yeah, because sometimes they'll have little tidbits where they'll show like a windmill or they'll show solar panels very briefly because they want to try to give you the idea they're for all energy. They're not. They're for, they're, they're for fossil fuel energy. That's what it's all about. All right, Judy, next one. <clears throat> oh, guys, this is a thumbnail. The last show that I put up on, uh, on YouTube, this is the best thumbnail I ever had. And it was almost like the, the, the YouTube gods put it up there. But uh, because of the way I loaded it in YouTube, I couldn't use the thumbnail. So sometimes... Even, you, I can't even get lucky. All right, next, Judy. Uh, this is from Sid. <laughs> and Sid wants to make Russia great again. We're going to vote for Putin Trump. Unbelievable, isn't it? Next, Judy. All right. Share if you think the next Democratic Supreme Court nominee should be this constitutional law professor. Guy, Judy, can you come back to me? Guys, could you imagine if Hit, when Hillary gets elected, if, because the, the Republicans were such, such uh, pricks about even voting for Obama's Supreme Court justice, could you imagine if 
he pulls that. <laughs> and if Hillary nominates him, um, guys like Uncle Joey, that's it. That's it. I'd have to go up to Catskill. I'd have to give him mouth to mouth. He couldn't take it. All of their heads would explode. I mean, Marty, Marty, we'd have to go take Marty to church. I, he couldn't deal with it. You know what I mean? But guys, hopefully, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> hey Hillary, even if you don't even if you don't nominate him, just the idea of giving him the business, you know. <laughs> All right, Judy next. All right. I got to stop saying how stupid can you be? Too many people are taking it as a challenge. <laughs> next. <laughs> All right. This is the only president in U.S. history who has been de denied his constitutional right to fill a Supreme Court vacancy. Can you spot the difference? Uncle Joey, can you see anything different with Obama and all the other presidents? Hmm. Think about it. Think about it, Joey. Next, Judy. <laughs> God, this is an early picture of Bernie. <laughs> Better to have burned and lost <laughs> than to never have burned at all. <laughs> Next. All right. And you see the little girl there with her father with the, with the uh, make, make America Straight Again hat. Dad, I can show you 347 examples of Trump just making stuff up. Oh, brother. All right, Judy, Next. Guys, this, I, I really feel this, too. Thank you, Bernie. We're a stronger party before, because of you. And, guys, I mean that. Bernie made things happen. He really did. All right, next, Judy. <laughs> this is from uh, my good buddy John Zanzel. He puts up a lot of dynamite stuff. If I offered you $100,000 to jump out of a plane with no parachute, would you do it? I bet you said no. But what if I told you the plane was on the ground? Moral of the story, know the facts before you open your mouth. Right, Joey? Got to learn how to be a critical thinker. That's why we surround ourselves with the question marks, so that people ask questions. Judy, you're supposed to be fading in and out. You missed the opportunity there. This is from Michelle. Daddy, why did Republicans nominate Donald Trump? Because they're so pissed off at Obama's successful, scandal-free presidency that it drove them crazy, son. And if that ain't the truth. All right, is that it, Judy? One more. All right. <laughs> this is from Diane. If the hackers could hack into the student loans and erase the files, That'd be great, wouldn't it? Hey, guys, you know, I remember back in the days of yore, they had debt forgiveness. And who knows? All right, but anyway, guys, the next clip is going to be from John. And John used to be the director of the show. And now he, he got a job you know, installing solar panels, and now he's working for a company that does these huge buildings. And he's up in uh, upstate New York, in Ontario, and he saw some wind turbines. So he sent me a picture, and I asked him if he could do a video. And guys, John Enough was nice enough to supply us with a video and what I'd like to suggest to anyone is, if you guys have any videos, put them on, Judy, can you bring our Facebook page up again? Post them on Facebook, on my Facebook page, and I'll try to put them on the, on the show. And guys, even if you just put up the, your stills or your, your emojis or your thumbnails, if they're cute, I mean, you get an idea how we do the show, all right? So the next clip, is going to be John with his uh, cell phone. And this is going to be up in Ontario, and uh, Ontario, New York. So Judy, can we see this clip, please? Hello, everybody. This is John Wolfert uh, for Who's Telling the Truth. Um, I uh, 
I was going along the road one day and I saw these uh, these uh, windmills out here, uh, these wind turbines. Uh, excuse my language. <coughs> um, and uh, I sent a couple pictures to uh, Uncle Rich, and he said, "John, I can't I can't see anything in the picture. Could you take a video?" And I said, "Yeah, sure." So um, you know, I'm in the area again, and I uh, decided to stop here and uh, just you know just observe these uh, these wind turbines. Um, as you can see, there's uh, no sound. Uh, I'm just going to stay quiet for a second here. There's absolutely no sound from these things, so I don't, you know, people say they, ma they make a lot of sound. Um, you know, that's not true at all. Uh, I don't see any uh, dead birds on the ground. Uh, they say that the uh, birds are flying into them and uh, dying. Uh, that's probably a freak occurrence. Probably doesn't happen too often. Um, as you can see, it's probably it's not going that all, got all the fast where a bird can't just uh, fly out of the way, dodge it. Um, you know, trees probably move faster than that. Um, and this is the company. Uh, this is a their truck here. Nobody's here. It's a Sunday, uh, Sunday afternoon, and uh, the company's called uh, Harbick. And uh, uh, I tried to look them up, but all I could find out was uh, uh, for my uh, bad. Uh, uh, internet connection. I, I, all I could find out was that they, they uh, manufacture some sort of uh, molding uh, in plastics. So it's a plastic manufacturing company and they're completely sustain sustainable. sustainable uh, the next off of, video, uh, remember, uh, we're uh, not green energy. Gonna, we're only going to use and, uh, about 20 seconds. See here, up. this is their truck. It's a, it's a hybrid the next one, the very uh, next one, truck. Very next one. Box truck. Oh, wait a minute. No, no, no. Um, yeah, so you yeah. don't really see too many of those around. Yeah, 30. So you can tell wh 30. whoever uh, is in charge of the company oh, is very okay. Uh, okay. We're only use uh, conscious of what they're right. doing. Uh, there's the second one. There's another. They have two. And then um, we're going to go right to the next here. One, to 31. one okay. there. One up there. Um, you know, this is a uh, typical, uh, looks like a typical manufacturing plant. Uh, uh, the, I believe the offices are on this side where the parking is, uh, and, uh, you know, it's uh, pretty amazing that there, there are some companies that are uh, uh, actually into the, uh, to using green energy and becoming um, uh, sustainable, and, and what it says here is uh, uh, technically, uh, technical innovation with uh, environmental responsibility. So, uh, you know, a lot of the, a lot more companies out there. So you got to be th start thinking about uh, becoming responsible uh, and uh, not polluting the environment, but uh, uh, just become responsible and uh, stay productive. You know, we're, we're not telling you to stop making money. We're just doing, telling you to do it smarter. Thanks. So, guys, I wanna I wanna thank John for for submitting that. <clears throat> And like I said, if you have videos, put them up on Facebook. If I can use them, I will. But what I did before I, before I put this up, I called Harback, and I spoke with Kate. And Kate was delightful, and she's, you know, and once I explained what we do, and I told her, you know, uh, we do a C, uh, community access TV show from Danbury, and she said, Rich, I have a cousin that lives in Danbury. So it's a small world, but uh, she was more than nice. And um, the next clip we're going to show you is uh, from the Science Center, and this is in Cleveland. And guys, the ironic thing, this is where the Republican National Convention was. And it was so ironic where Fox News had the Foxtitutes in front of the camera, and in the background, they had the wind turbine, the one thing that everybody at Fox News will agree is bad for everything because why? It takes advantage of the free market. And Republicans don't like the free market if you don't have to pay for oil and gas. <laughs> this is their logic. That's their free market, the ability to sell coal, natural gas, and oil. But guys, the next clip we're going to do, and we're just going to do a portion of this clip, actually shows you the Science Center and the windmill. 
at the Science Center. So, Judy, clip number 30, please. All right, so you can see it. All right, now, Judy, can you come back to me? Guys, now we're going to go inside that turbine with the president of the Great Lakes Science Center. And you're going to think she's a minion because she's got, she's got this little light on her hard hat. But guys, she's going to give us some raw facts and figures. So Judy, let's have clip number 31, please. So guys, you heard her, right? That wind turbine provides 6 to 8% of their power usage. Now, I don't know, Judy, we're going to be coming up with the stills next. 32 is next. But guys, I don't know what's at Harback. They have uh, two turbines, and we're going to show you a Google Earth picture and we're going to look at it as if we're looking at it from the, uh, from the satellite. And I, guys, see if you can pick up the, uh, the wind turbine. So Judy, can we have still number 32, please? Now guys, take a good look at this picture. Look at the lower right-hand quadrant. See if you notice any shadows, any elongated shadows. Do you see the two long black shadows? Those are the shadows from the turbines. Now it looks like one turbine is bigger than the other one. I'm not sure. I don't know. But Judy, can we get a little bit? Can we go to the next still? We'll get a little bit closer. <clears throat> Guys, this is even closer. So you can actually see the turbines there. You know, right dead center in the middle at the very bottom and up on the right hand you know, the right-hand side, almost at the top. Look at the, so you see the two turbines. Now, guys, we don't know how much electricity those turbines provide for that business. But you know what? Take a good look at the roof. Do you guys see anything missing? Anybody see anything missing on those roofs? Guys, I don't know when this picture was taken but I don't see any solar panels. So you know what? Maybe, maybe, Je Judy, can you come back to me? Maybe we can have Solar City work out some kind of deal where you guys at Harback can get all your electricity for virtually for free. And what would you do with that extra money? You'd probably share those profits with your employees, wouldn't you? Now, guys, look, you read the side of their truck. They're a progressive company. They've got the wind turbines on their property. These are probably the type of people that would embrace getting all their electricity from renewable. So maybe, maybe they have solar panels. Maybe we don't see it. Maybe they're, I don't know. But you know what? I promised Kate that I was going to call her and I tell her the show is going to be up tomorrow. So when I call her, I'm going to mention it to her. And we, you know, I have a buddy that works at um, Solar City. And guys, we're going to get to the uh, Gigafactory part. But we're going to show you. Now, Judy, can we have still number 34, please? Guys, this is from my buddy Mike. And this is the first Tesla uh, battery wall delivered in the New York area, Mike is going to install it. 
on a house that he's putting solar panels on. So, Judy, can you come back to me again? So, guys, you know how I am. We're going to be big on this because we want to see not only the panels on the roofs, but we want to see the batteries in the garage. And, you know, like I always say on this show, put solar panels on your roof and a Tesla in your garage, and you can tell the Koch brothers to kiss your ass. Plain and simple, and that's as nice as I can put it. But guys, before the Gigafactory opened, we, back on November 8, 2014, when we found out where the Gigafactory was going to be built, we did show number 64. So Judy, let's go back two years when we were young and let's see what we predicted for the Gigafactory. Hit it. Nope, we're looking for number 35, Judy. There you go. Hey, everybody. Oh. What happened? There you go. Hey, everybody. Uncle Rich here for Who's Telling the Truth. Guys, today is a special day. You know, we, we've been talking about the Gigafactory, and I've been mentioning it week after week, and when is it coming, and where is it coming from, and, you know, there was four different states that were in on, the, on, you know, on it, that you had Texas, New Mexico, Nevada, California, they were fighting for Elon Musk's business, and they were fighting for the Gigafactory. And what's the Gigafactory? Well, it's going to be the biggest battery factory in the world. They're going to make as many batteries at this one factory as are being made in the entire world right now. So, it's come to the point where the speculation is over, the, the bidding is in, and the winner is, so John, if you could play the first clip, the winner. We gather today as the Nevada family to share in a monumental announcement that will change Nevada forever and set in motion the creation of thousands of new jobs and stream billions of dollars into our economy. I don't need to say that this is a significant and historic day for all of us. And so, it is my honor to announce that we have reached an agreement with Tesla Motor Company subject to legislative review and approval that will enable Tesla to build the world's largest and most advanced battery factory right here in the Silver State. <laughs> Guys, this is a reason to celebrate. I mean, this is, you know, Nevada is, is Nevada just hit the jackpot. They, you know, they just got the bonanza. And, uh, you know, I was, I was talking, uh, I was talking to, I want to give a shout out to Steve and Rita. Uh, Steve, uh, Steve's a young guy, he's a hustler. Uh, you know, uh, I've known him for a while and he's worked all over the, the Eastern seaboard, you know, providing for his family and stuff. And Steve, I got a suggestion for you tonight. Sit down, take it easy, Watch this show, and I think Reno, Nevada might be the one place that you and your family might want to move to. And after we show you what's going to happen uh, with Tesla and Reno, the fact that they're going to be paying people a living wage with benefits, 6,500 jobs, $15,000 associ $15, associated jobs. It doesn't end. It goes on and on. And I tell you, you're going to start to see Elon Musk is going to unveil a new business model. 
because, you know, I told you people are going to get paid 25 bucks an hour to work at this plant. He could pay them half that, but he won't do it. Why? For the same reason that Henry Ford took care of the people that built his cars. When he said, I'm going to pay my men $5 a day, his competition said, Henry, you can pay him $1 a day. They have to work here. And he says, yeah, but if I pay him $1 a day, they can't afford to buy my cars. If I pay him $5 a day, they can afford my cars. And this is the new business plan. $25 an hour with benefits. And guys, you know, if, if there ever was a reason to party, uh, this is one of the reasons. If there was ever two words to express one reason, these are the two words. So, John. So, guys, that was almost two years ago that we first let everybody know about the Gigafactory and, you know, things just kept happening and, and happening and, and now they finally come to fruition. The, the Giga, the factory, the factory is only 16% complete, but they're already starting to use it. Those batteries that you saw on the pallet actually came from the Gigafactory. They're actually shipping the batteries. And don't forget, they need those batteries because Tesla is coming out with the Model 3, which is going to be, um, they've already taken 400,000 orders for the car. But without those batteries, the Model 3 doesn't go anywhere. So guys, now we're going to show you, we're going to give you an actual tour of the of the factory of the giga factory and i'll tell you you're going to get a kick out of it so judy let's have clip number 36 please Welcome to the Gigafactory. We're about a half an hour outside of Reno, Nevada at the joint effort between Panasonic and Tesla to create one of the world's most advanced factories. This is where they'll produce all the battery packs for the Model 3 and ultimately all of Tesla's other cars too. It's already over 800,000 square feet. It's gonna be more than five times that big when they finish it. They're still building, but we're gonna take you for a tour just the same. You have to get up on a hill to appreciate just how large the Gigafactory is already. But this is less than 15% of the final size when it will basically cover all the flat space that you can see here. The team will push out walls and dig out the hillside to make room for the ridiculously huge operation, which will ultimately produce more lithium ion batteries than the entire world did in 2013. This gigantic Gigafactory idea, I thought it's a crazy. <laughs> <laughs> because at that time, the production capacity of this Gigafactory exceeded would exceed total global production capacity of the industry, not the Panasonic, not the Japanese companies. All Japanese, Korean, Chinese company combined. So I thought I, it's a crazy idea. But I was crazy. I mean, I was wrong. After seeing extraordinary success of the announcing Model 3, the factory is already turning out a few batteries, units to be used in Tesla's Powerwall residential systems. However, the team hopes to be churning out the first Model 3 battery packs by early next year. So, uh, pro probably in like kind of March, April timeframe next year, um, is when we'll start producing packs for um, early production vehicles that, that need to then go through validation testing and, and then be ready for a ramp around uh, you know, basically July, August next year. And by the end of 2018, they hope to be approaching full production. And what does full production look like? Well, they're hoping for 500,000 battery packs coming out of here annually. But due to some unexpected efficiencies, Elon Musk thinks they might be able to do three times that. Uh, one of the things that we discovered as we got more and more into the Gigafactory design, and in terms of optimizing what it could do, uh, we, we found that we could probably 
uh, achieve about three times the output that was originally planned. So we originally expected about 35 gigawatt hours at the cell level and about, about 50 at the, at the module and pack level. Uh, we now think we can probably do a, about 150 in the same volumetric um, uh, space as the, as the original design. And that's crucial. The battery packs produced here are the most important component for the Model 3. Without these packs, the nearly 400,000 people who've pre-ordered a car are going to be pretty upset. But it's not just about the volume. By churning out packs here, Musk believes they can significantly reduce the cost of the car's batteries. At, at this point, I think we're, we're optimistic that it's greater than 30%. Um, we, we don't want to bank that until, until it happens, um, but I would say at this point, 30% is a conservative number. It's, I think by 2020, it'll definitely be more than 30%. It's that lower cost that will ensure Tesla makes a healthy profit on every Model 3 sold. The overarching goal of Tesla is to accelerate the advent of sustainable energy. Um, so we're going to take the set of actions that we think are most likely to achieve that goal. That's about it from here at the Gigafactory. We still got a long way to go, but Tesla thinks they'll be producing battery packs for the Model 3 by the middle of next year. And ultimately, they want to produce 500,000 battery packs a year. They think they can get all the way to 1.5 million battery packs out of here every single year. It's a good thing they've got plenty of room to grow. Guys, if you know anybody young and adventurous, you know, looking for employment, go west, young man. <laughs> I mean, really, think about it. If you don't get a job in the factory, look at all the supporting jobs they're going to need. Pizza man, hairstylist, dry cleaners, uh, bakers, you know, candlestick makers, <laughs> they're going to need everybody. And they're, these people are going to have money. They're going to be able to pay. And the money's going to circulate. And guys, one of the first things that Tesla did before they even started building the plant, they donated $35 million dollars to the education system so that they could build new schools and entice teachers. To, guys, I'm telling you, this is the future. So if you know somebody looking for a job, send them out towards Reno. You can go skiing in the morning <laughs> and go swimming in the afternoon. You know, you go up to the mountains and then you come back to the desert. But guys, the next, uh, the next clip we're going to show you is what the component parts of the batteries that they make are. And they're pretty simple. It's lithium ion. The same batteries that we have in our computers, in our cell phones. These are the batteries that are going to revolutionize the world. And what are they made out of? I'm glad you asked that question because we're going to tell you. And this is a learning part of the show, hopefully. You'll keep this in the back of your mind. So, Judy, let's have clip number 37, please. So, yeah, uh, the, the, the lithium question comes up quite a bit. Um, the, 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 the nice thing about lithium is it's very plentiful. So lithium is the third most common element in the universe, uh, first being hydrogen, second being helium. Um, now, the hydrogen is all bound up in water on Earth, uh, water and hydrocarbons. Um, and so you don't find naturally occurring hydrogen on, on Earth. Uh, but, and, and then the helium, um, being a noble gas, just doesn't combine with anything and basically floats away. But lithium is a metal and does not float away. So there's an enormous amount of lithium. In almost any salty solution, there's some amount of lithium. So there's an enormous amount of lithium in the ocean. Any kind of um, uh, dried lake bed where there was a salt lake that dried long ago, there will be enormous amounts of lithium. So the, the actual amount of lithium in, uh, in the world is, is far in excess of what's needed for electrification or transport. Lithium only constitutes about 2% of the, the battery. So it's, 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 it's called lithium ion, but it's sort of the active ingredient, but it's only uh, about 2% about of the, the, the battery. Yeah, so, so there's plenty of lithium to convert every car in the world to electric. You know, that, that won't be a constraint at all. And, and even after that's done, we can start recycling it. So we, we won't keep yeah. using lithium. It's not like 
you know, oil or something like that. I've heard a lot of those comparisons like peak lithium, which is kind of nonsense. You know, because you, once you build this, this fleet of electric cars, you don't need any more of it. It's just, you can just right. keep reusing it and reprocessing it forever. So guys, hopefully we learned something there. Uh, lithium is the third most common element. And you know, you tell somebody that and then you say to them, <laughs> you know, hydrogen is the most common and helium is the second, but helium is a noble gas, so it just drifts away. Guys, well, you tell somebody something like that, and they go, hey, this guy must know what he's talking about. <laughs> and guys, that's what it's all about. It's all about asking questions and who's telling the truth. And that's why we have so much fun here. And guys, there's one thing I always want you to keep in the back of your mind. We, we got science on our side. And when you have science on your side, you can't be wrong. And I try to tell this to Uncle Joey and all the Republicans, but they have cognitive dissidence. They refuse to accept what is real and provable. They accept what they've been told and they refuse to accept anything else. All right, now the last clip we have and Judy, I guess we'll run this and then we'll run the credits and then you can come back to me. But this is another clip inside the Gigafactory. So let's just have some more fun taking a look at what's there and, and how much fun they're having. So Judy, hit it. Tesla wants to fill the world with electric cars, but it's gonna need this factory to do so. Thirty minutes outside of Reno, Tesla is building its own factory to keep up with electric car battery demand and drive down the prices. The finished Gigafactory will be 1.9 million square feet. What we're seeing today is only one-sixth of that final size. But it's already building the battery packs in its structure. Partner Panasonic is building out the cell manufacturing portion, and the companies hope to actually be building the cells themselves on site by the end of the year. Most of the battery demand is for the new $35,000 Model 3. Now there are already 400,000 pre-orders for the new Tesla. The factory itself is being built in sections. What's currently erected are sections A, B, and C. Section D is up, but it's mostly bare steel beams. Construction of section E began two days ago. Guys, I hope we learned something today. I hope, I hope you enjoyed the show. And I want to thank Harback for giving us the opportunity to put that up. And like I said, I'm gonna call Kate and I'm gonna mention about solar. And you know what, guys? There's only one or two things that can happen. Either she's aware of it or she isn't. And that's where we come in. You know, all we wanna do is socially, we wanna spread the wealth, share the ideas. All right, everybody.